Hi guys, today's topic is SAT, ACT and other standardized tests. ACT is a nationalized test and it normalizes the public and private high school grading system. If you remember, last year we had Varsity Blues, which is a cheating scandal of how competitive our college admission system was. Actresses like Felicity Huffman had given $15,000 to people who were willing to take the test in her child's place. Parents got to thinking, and especially after COVID, we are not ready to chill out the full tuition without schools being 100% face-to-face. So at this level, even graduate colleges are removing the need for test scores and they're making standardized tests archaic because, uh, they, of course, they have their own reason. They have been hit hard financially. So now they have lowered the bar to encourage enrollment. But here is what I think colleges should do, even the top-notch ones. With COVID, we are now seeing the relevance or the irrelevance of how colleges and their test scores have become. College Board, which is a non-profit that makes $1 billion in revenue by conducting all these standardized tests, did tests last year, which completely glitched out. So we have to think about other ways to assess our children who are entering into these colleges than just based off a single score on a four-hour test. Of course, big tire colleges are still hanging on to it, but a lot of lower-end colleges are saying test scores are not compulsory because, of course, they want to boost their enrollment. The point is, how about we encourage hard-working students who are committed academically and professionally to go ahead and charge ahead? So these are the children that we need to take into consideration. We also should consider making our colleges racially, economically, and ethnically diverse. Um, of course, there was an attempt to add the adversity score, uh, also called the environmental context dashboard, uh, to create a holistic approach in admissions. They were looking at the landscape of a high school student, what the curriculum they took and what grades they took much before they started analyzing their test scores. Admission officers were actually looking at the neighborhoods that the children grew up in. Of course, uh, there's got a lot of pushback and now some of the colleges who were going to go that route have removed them. But change is happening. First time this year, we have seen that some of the top schools have made tests optional and uh, they have call it, they have cancelled all these uh, tests. I see, especially when I teach robotics and coding, I see that not all children are equipped to be online 100% because they come from crowded homes with uh, with parents who have very limited tech resources and knowledge about hand, how to handle this uh, technology. Um, and the, the diversity is, uh, you can see it even with uh, the test scores. Families who are making $200,000 have uh, children coming from those backgrounds have one in five chance to score about $1,400. But uh, if your family is making $20,000 or less, you have one in 50 chance to make a score of 1400 So here is my advice to parents. Of course, there are diagnostic tests on Khan Academy, yes. Why do we have to pay all these prep schools to help us boost our SAT scores? Yes, there are advantages to all these uh, testing places. Um, they give you professional help. They help you understand your pitfalls. They see so many children taking these tests so they can, they'll be able to guide you. They'll make you accountable if your child is not a self-starter. All these college prep schools are important. Yes, but parents, I want you to just stop your rat race and just think what you want to get out of this really for you and your own child. I, I can understand parents who want to outsource this test prep because, of course, you cannot be everything for your child and also be a tutor. So. Uh, my point is uh, there are scams out there where they say that, hey, you need to know 7,000 vocab words uh, if you want to pass the SAT. You know, they are not necessarily all true. Uh, so uh, they and also there is uh, there are all these group test classes that are happening, test prep classes that are happening. Usually the very advanced child and the very uh, lower uh, at the lower end of the spectrum, those children don't benefit. Only the ones in the middle benefit. And also you have to consider when you're paying these prep academies, all these thousands of dollars, the teachers, the tutors who are actually ending up teaching your children might only get 12 bucks an hour or something in the background, you know. So I would like to request you to encourage your child uh, to take up tests on Khan Academy, Princeton Review and College Board also have some good uh, practice test books. 
uh, encourage your child to start laying a foundation for their academic excellence starting in ninth grade itself you know they they can show their commitment to excellence uh, much before they get to senior year and also parents please 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 i see this in so many with so many parents that i meet um, uh, if it's an ex- economical strain for you to consider any test prep academy please let your child know just because you go to a top notch test prep academy doesn't mean that you are going to get a perfect sat score there's so many college planning workshops out there uh, but their agenda and your agenda is it matching is it what you truly want uh, think about all these uh, uh, their dime a dozen and they're putting pressure on our children are these kids feeling like they are defined by their scores in the end ask your child will a 4 hour test determine what your real worth is